So the House Intel Committee is now in possession of an audio tape that appears to be the voice of President Trump. President Trump is at a dinner with Lev Parnas and Igor Fruman in 2018. This voice that appears to be the president is demanding the firing of Marie Yovanovitch, then the U.S. ambassador to the Ukraine. That's according to an attorney for Lev Parnas, the indicted associate of Rudy Giuliani, who has been cooperating with House congressional investigations. So ABC News has just released the audio. Let's play that now. Listen to it. The biggest problem there, I think, where we, where we need to start is we got to get rid of the ambassador. It's, she's still left over from the Clinton administration. Where the ambassador <laughs> Basically, walk around telling everybody, wait, he's going to get impeached, uh, just wait. Get rid of her. Hooray. Okay, get her out tomorrow. Okay, get her out tomorrow. <laughs> Take her out, okay? Excellent. Do it. More tension in the eastern Mediterranean as Cyprus accuses Turkey of using stolen data to position a drilling ship similar to this one precisely on top of a potential gas field in its waters. Greece too is bracing for the potential appearance of Turkish exploration vessels in waters east of Crete and it's threatening to sink them. Turkey could have joined Egypt, Israel, Greece and Cyprus in the East Med Gas Forum to develop gas fields, but has chosen instead to be a habitual transgressor of international law. The East Med Gas Forum countries are planning to build a 2,000 kilometer pipeline to sell gas to Europe. Turkey has reacted by drilling in Cypriot waters without Cyprus permission and threatening to do the same in Greek waters. Last year, Turkey and Libya marked out a corridor of territorial water claimed by Greece, raising tension further. A sense of urgency as emergency workers dig fast to rescue people trapped beneath the rubble of buildings that collapsed in the Turkish city of Elazığ. This woman has made it out alive, but dozens more are thought still to be trapped. The quake, measuring 6.8 on the Richter scale, was followed by a number of aftershocks. Several deaths have been recorded and hundreds of people are being treated for injuries. Around 30 buildings have collapsed and many more are now thought to be structurally unsound. Locals have been asked to stay away from those that have been damaged, meaning many will be forced to sleep outside. The area frequently records overnight temperatures below zero during winter and the Turkish government has arranged for beds, tents and blankets to be delivered. Emergency workers from across the country have been sent to the affected provinces of Elazığ and Malatya, both of which are sparsely populated and in places hard to reach. A senior U.S. official has voiced hope that the recent replacement of North Korea's foreign minister signals a positive change for the country's stalled denuclearization talks. There are concerns that North Korea's decision to appoint hardliner Lee Sun Gwan as its new foreign minister could signal a shift to a tougher stance. But David Stowell, U.S. Assistant Secretary of State for East Asian and Pacific Affairs, said Friday that making the replacement itself indicates something, adding that he hopes it's a positive sign that could bring the two sides back to negotiations. When asked about a possible North Korea-U.S. meeting on the sidelines of the Munich Security Conference in Germany next month, Stowell said that he was not aware of any plans. It's the first time psychologist James Mitchell has testified in court about his work for the CIA after September 11th. And Mitchell was both combative and proud of his work as a contract interrogator. What he called life-saving questioning techniques, lawyers for the 9-11 defendants called torture, meaning they shouldn't be convicted, much less executed. Mitchell testified he waterboarded Khalid Sheikh Mohammed and Abu Zubaydah, something he said he found upsetting. 
But he said staff CIA interrogators regularly crossed the line, forcing detainees to kneel backwards with a broomstick behind their knees, depriving them of sleep, food, and clothing. Or, in the case of Amar Abolucci, letting rookie interrogators slam him into a wall over and over for practice. The deadly coronavirus soaring in numbers tonight, a new case here in the U.S. The CDC now confirming a second case, a woman in Chicago. In fact, 63 patients are now being tested here in the U.S. for possible symptoms across 22 states. And alarming new video tonight from China showing patients crowded into the Wuhan Red Cross Hospital. The staff in hazmat suits. Tonight, China reporting dozens of deaths, more than 900 people infected worldwide. And tonight, China has ordered a new hospital be built in just 10 days. Government health officials tonight say that without a doubt, more Americans will be diagnosed with this deadly virus in the coming days. The latest confirmed case here is a woman in her 60s from Chicago. She returned from China last week and felt sick three days later. She has limited close contacts, all of whom are currently well and who will be monitored closely for symptoms. A breakthrough after more than three months of talks, Sudan's government signing a peace deal with the Sudan People's Liberation Movement North, or SPLMN, led by Malik Agar. It's part of a bid by the Sudanese Transitional Administration to end years of conflict in various parts of the country. The deal that we have signed addressed a number of issues. It addressed the issue of legislation in the two areas, South Kordofan and the Blue Nile. It also addressed the issue of land and wealth and power distribution, as well as security arrangements. We will lead our country forward. The SPLMN started fighting the Sudanese government in 2011, after accusing it of marginalization and impeding democracy. Failing infrastructure, a controversial rash of violence amongst prisoner population has now seen eight deaths behind its walls in just this new year already. More than 600 cells at Parchman have been deemed totally uninhabitable with inoperable toilets, mold, no water, electrical shorts, the list goes on. Rapper Jay-Z is even stepping in, paying for several lawyers for the inmates who have filed a class action lawsuit against the prison. For more on this controversy, we'll talk with Amanda Hamilton. She is the president of Mississippi Dreams Prisoner Family Support. Amanda, thank you for being with us. So first, can you tell us what it's like for prison families um, thank you for having me. And first of all, I would like to correct you. There have been now 10 deaths. Um, we had another one yesterday. Six months after the abrogation of Article 370, 2G internet services will be restored across all 20 districts of Jammu and Kashmir from today. This move comes ahead of Republic Day celebrations. Access shall be limited only to whitelisted sites and the restrictions on social media applications will continue. Last week, 2G mobile internet services were restored in all 10 districts of Jammu and two districts of Kashmir after the Supreme Court came down heavily on the Union Territory Administration for shutting down the internet. Voice call and SMS services have been restored for all prepaid connections. Telecom services were shut in the entire Jammu and Kashmir region on August 5th last year when the center abrogated the special status of the erstwhile state under Article 370 and also bifurcated it into two Union territories.
People living in Sentosa Cove are up in arms over floating sea barriers that have been put around the island recently. Now, the barriers are part of a network that's being installed around Singapore's coastline to guard against maritime threats. But residents in the exclusive enclave say that the barriers are noisy. And according to the police, it's the first time that they've received such complaints since the project began. Floating sea barriers like these are seen as a critical piece of Singapore's coastal defence against illegal immigrants or even terrorists. Just earlier this year, three foreigners had their plans scuppered by police, thanks in part to these barriers. Authorities have been installing them around Singapore since 2014 and aim to cover 70% of the nation's coastline.